I don't know how to be alone, meaning when I am alone, I stay that way. I isolate myself, ruminating with the same old used up thoughts from the past 10 years and wonder yet again, why do I feel so awful? Up until this summer, I twisted situations and relationships into a dysphoric idea that people don't really care about me and that I'm either too much or too little for them. But that, that is not true. That is just egoistic self-sabotage and it's BS. This summer in New York City is different. I'm a part of something, or rather I'm finally allowing myself to be, but my summer could have ended up a lot different. First, thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Last winter I began therapy for a few months and being able to release my emotions and thoughts in therapy where the purpose is to help you made a huge difference for me. Unfortunately, it was so expensive that I had to put on hold, but BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. So I'm actually going to be meeting with a therapist very soon. I signed up just today, it's super simple. If there is something that's interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp might be a really good option for you. You can start communicating within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help. This is professional therapy done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 15,000 plus counselor network which may not be available in many areas and the service is available for clients worldwide you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor you'll get timely and thoughtful responses plus you can schedule your weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so it's easy and free to change counselors if needed BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today visit better help.com slash Anya that's better h-e-l-p and join the over 1 million other people taking charge of their mental health with the help of experienced professionals if you visit betterhelp.com slash Anya you will get 10% discount for your first month Back in June, I booked my flight back from Wisconsin to go to a friend's store opening. I didn't know why but I knew I had to be there, and I was right. It was the first stepping stone of so many more. I remember seeing Natalia and jumpingly complimenting her on her work ethic and TikToks. And then we ran into each other again the next day, and she invited me to a party that night. And we hung out again. That is and again. Yeah. And eventually she asked if she could stay with me for a few weeks. And I, of course, enthusiastically accepted this request because a recent discovery of mine is I thrive when I'm around people and I'm the healthiest version of myself when I'm not by myself. I haven't laughed. <laughs> or danced. <laughs> or joked around as much as I did those weeks she was here. Oh, that's Natalia's super busy, so she wanted to go on this ferry, and I was a little sleepy, tired, uh, hermit kind of mood, so I decided I shouldn't go, but then I did decide I should go. And what I learned is sometimes it is very good to step outside the comfort zone because I wanted to just crawl back into a habit of sulking and staying indoors when I feel like poop. And really that means I should switch something up. And I did, and it was beautiful. Uh, Midwinter, when I will definitely hit the blues and things will start spiraling because it happens, because it's winter, I'm gonna go on the ferry. If that also starts happening to you this winter and you live in New York City, send me a DM and we'll go on the ferry together. So, after a few weeks, Natalia was off to her next destination. Pat sent me a DM in 2019 saying, I would give you the biggest, most loving hug possible. This was an intriguing message, so I responded. 
and it led to many Snapchat video conversations and pen pal letters that I am still meaning to respond to. I'm so sorry. I'm actually going to write it today. I'm going to write it today. They're on their way, Pat. And eventually, two years later, Pat is in New York City. You don't come across a lot of people like Pat. He's always looking for fun new experiences, fun new people to talk to, and extraordinary funny new words to say. For example, we were walking through the park and someone trying to sell something yells out, how are you? Normally, my response is squirmish and avoidant. I'm like, oh, I'm fine and walk away, which is sad. Like this is an opportunity to connect with somebody and maybe I should be a little bit more open. But Pat, he boldly says, I'm doing spectacular. And you can see these people take a step back and be like, oh, okay. That's such a fun way to go about life. Wait, let's let's not use the word fun. What's a what's a what's a more extraordinary word? Fabulous. Such a fabulous way to go throughout lives. Not just good, spectacular. I visited Chicago to meet up with my friends Ashley and Nolan from my exchange year in Germany. But I got there a day early, so I stayed with a friend Dana. Dana and I met last summer at a BLM protest. I remember meeting her and like just knowing that I want to be around her. And there is a reason for that. Being around Dana is like you're living in a Dr. Seuss book. Suddenly trees are more than trees. Trees can be whatever you want them to be. Uh, air around you is now magical fairy dust and the sidewalk now turns into a path leading towards some treasure. You're gonna love me when you're sifting through all this footage. Just, I really love being around people that are open and encourage you to be open and to explore and to experiment. My friend Ava told me once, and generally I'm just one of Anya's BFFs, I yeah, hope. Man. Because Thanks we met each talk. other in the spring and we had a soul connection. Come as you are and if that's not accepted or reciprocated, that's how you weed them out. Like, why would you want to be around someone anyways that would shut you down? Because I've had friendships like that. Um, and I actually one time asked. I kind of got a rude side eye from a friend and I had been sensing that. And I asked, I was like, why, why are you giving me that look? And she told me, you're just a little intense sometimes. Um, and that's okay, you know, but it's good to know like, who that is and isn't good for, because it's not worth sacrificing who you are to make someone else comfortable. Sometimes I overthink what the most digestible way for me to act is to please the other person. So I am a people pleaser, which according to TikTok is like a manipulation tactic, like pleasing people, because then you're not really yourself and you're just trying to make them feel good. Holding back the funny faces and awkward jokes and sudden bursts of inspiration and childish runs and skipping through life is exhausting. It is really tiring to hide yourself and lonely. Rather be cringy and give people icks because if they're gonna get icks and give you rude side eyes, then you know. Then you know and you can take your allotness and your intenseness somewhere else. You're weeding them out. Um, the next day I met up with Ashley. I'm gonna see Ashley soon. We haven't seen each other in over a year. <laughs> oh my gosh, Ashley! This was a much happier reunion than the last time we saw each other over a year prior. It was uh, when we were forced to be sent home from our exchange year in Germany because of COVID. Sucks. I don't know if I'm doing this right. And please have a little bit <laughs> Then we met up with Nolan. We're going to meet up with Nolan. Okay, we, have, we can't be late. Nolan, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, Nolan. Where are you at? I need a location. <laughs> And then we celebrated me turning 20 years old. I usually don't count when it turns 12 to be my birthday, 
but I'm gonna count. But today it. it's counted. 45 more seconds as a teenager. Oh! Wait, this is so insane. Wait, what song? Oh, birthday bin. Ah. One time for the birthday bin. I have that song put on. Oh, it just goes. Yeah! I'm Tony. I'm Tony. Ashley and Nolan are friends that love me enough to be honest with me. Uh, which means a lot. It shows someone cares about you enough to want to work through things with you and to point out things that are hurting them because they care about your relationship enough to do that. I am the worst texter, caller, phone communicator that I know. It can be months of unread texts and missed calls and FaceTimes and they accept that from me, but they want me to do better and they encourage me and I'm just really grateful to have them. Bye! I love you! Bye! Road trip time! Probably don't put it where I'm on my I'm going to Indiana with Ashley. <laughs> Corn! Yeah! Uh, I'm gonna be with you until Thursday. She's gonna meet all my family. We love a good road trip. Yeah, it was very sporadic. My flight was supposed to be this today at like 4 a.m. in the night. Instead, was like, no, I'll just fly out of Indianapolis. And then we decided she'd stay for four days. And I was gonna say, it's gonna be so fun! Ah! He's like 29, don't know how to like, his face is very. <coughs> Whoa, I feel strong. <laughs> I'm so strong! <laughs> I refuse to buy furniture for this apartment like the first year of staying here because furniture is a commitment. It's saying I will make use out of this object. I contemplated, still kind of do leaving New York every single day. So why buy a couch or a table? Why make life comfortable when it's only gonna be a nuisance getting rid of these things when I leave? Also at the time, I was in a long distance relationship that left me very unsettled. So I suppose this is my segue into telling you that Johnny and I broke up in April. I'm gonna be stern here, please. Do not say you're sorry for me, or you feel bad for me, or that this is sad. Letting go can be painful, but it is so necessary, and I, I'm proud about it. Relationships end and change, and that's good. That is part of being a mushy, gushy, squishy human being. It moves and changes and grows. I want to talk about this relationship for a few reasons. One, long distance is unique. Two, our relationship was not toxic. Three, this is insight I really would have benefited from, but also like, wouldn't have unless I went through it, but it would have been nice to have it, but I wouldn't have it or understand it or comprehend it unless I went through it. So that's the third reason. Often when people talk about breakups online, it was like a toxic situation or the other person wasn't good for them. And this case is very different. Johnny is an amazing, genuine, really, really good person. And I am so forever grateful to him for being my first significant partner because it showed me what I'm worth and what I will and will not tolerate when it comes to intimate relationships. The first serious relationship someone goes into can set the precedent for what you will accept later on. And I know to accept what's good and what is healthy and whole. So. I admire him so much for that. So long distance. First, it is exhausting and not a full relationship. A healthy relationship is exploring and learning and growing together and having new experiences together. But instead in a long distance relationship, your mind is somewhere else and you're trying to compensate to feel love that you just cannot feel through a phone. The majority of the relationship is repetitive FaceTime calls and texts here and there. In some cases that sacrifice is worth it, like you know exactly when you're going to be together again, or soul communication through a phone or letters is sufficient. But if the separation's indefinite, your current sucky reality is in hopes of it being maybe worth it at some point in time, that could be one year, two years, six years, whenever that will be, but you can't guarantee that it will be worth the sacrifice. And I guess that is what 
a sacrifice is, is you're risking something. I couldn't have a current sake reality anymore in hopes that it pays off in the end or that I will feel better at some point because right now I don't. So I decided to live for a good right now reality instead. <laughs> Second, I held on longer in this relationship because Johnny is a really good, genuine person, but that doesn't mean we're compatible. Yeah, we listened to each other, we tried to understand each other, we respected each other, and for the most part, we're emotionally present. I thought, wow, I'm so lucky to even be in a relationship where someone is good to me. There's so many that aren't like that. Why would I say goodbye to something like that? But being a good person doesn't make them the right person. Anyways, once we broke up, New York felt a little bit more like home. so happy I let go to let more love into my life. Okay, I gotta admit, a lot of that was scripted. I wrote it out. What do we think? It was kind of hard to let the personality come through when I had to write something down. But otherwise, I don't really make a lot of sense and thoughts aren't at words. What do you think about that? I'm experimenting. It was new style. Anyways, love you. Bye. Endings are so awkward. <sighs> oh, it's just me making them awkward. Bye.